Meanwhile, the situation in Afghanistan is still precarious. There was a new round of peace talks in Doha, but there was no breakthrough, needless to say, no peace yet. Instead, the Taliban and the Afghan government agreed to meet again. Meanwhile, South Asia's eternal troublemaker is stirring the pot. Unidentified assailants in Pakistan kidnapped the Afghan ambassador's daughter. She was beaten up and tortured for hours. Kabul has responded by recalling its envoy to Islamabad. Our next report brings you the latest in the Afghan churn. The Afghan embassy in Islamabad wears a deserted look. The diplomats inside are preparing to leave. Kabul has called them back to protect them from Pakistan's unhinged extremists. Our story begins on Friday, a kidnapping in Pakistan's capital city, in the swanky business district called the Blue Area. The target was this young woman, Silsila Ali Kil, the daughter of Afghanistan's ambassador to Pakistan. She was kidnapped while returning home. The assailant barged into her car and beat her up. Hours later, she woke up, bruised and tied up. Silsila does not remember her time in captivity, but she did have a piece of paper tucked away in her scarf. It had two messages on it. Communist, your turn is next. A day later, her father, the ambassador, went public with the incident. He confirmed that his daughter had been tortured. This wasn't just another case of street crime in Islamabad. This was targeted and political. The Afghan government summoned Pakistan's ambassador, Mansur Ahmed Khan. Hundreds of Afghans swarmed the Pakistani embassy. Fearing more attacks, Kabul decided to recall its diplomats in Islamabad. The Taliban called the kidnapping an act against Islam. Even their allies in terrorism were demanding action. Pakistan was boxed in. They announced an investigation and put more soldiers at the ambassador's house. But by Sunday, the tone changed. Pakistan's interior minister said there was no abduction, that it was all an international conspiracy. Islamabad's strategy is a scrambled one. They are investigating the kidnapping, at the same time denying it. They are promising cooperation, at the same time crying conspiracy. This episode has made one thing clear. Pakistan cannot be trusted with peace in Afghanistan. That peace, by the way, is still a work in progress. The Afghan government and the Taliban have concluded their latest round of talks in Doha. What was the outcome? An agreement on more talks. The two sides are enemies in Afghanistan, but negotiators in Doha. We all know that eventually we should reach a negotiated, peaceful political settlement. We have reaffirmed our commitment here, and those last two days were a good chance to learn about each other's positions. For the Taliban, these talks are a delaying tactic. Their impressive gains on the battlefield continue. So rumors of an old alliance reviving are rife in Kabul. They first came together in 1996. Uzbeks, Tajiks and Hazara, united in their objective of keeping the Taliban at bay. They were called the Northern Alliance, backed by India, Iran and Russia. From 1996 to 2001, they kept the flame of resistance alive. But when the Americans came, they dissolved back into society. Some of them joined Hamiz Karzai's government. Could a repeat be on the cards? India's foreign minister visited both Iran and Russia this month. Afghanistan topped his agenda. But reviving the Northern Alliance will not be easy. Both Russia and Iran have resigned to the reality of Taliban. The hatred of the 1990s has given way to practical politics. Plus, President Ghani's government does not have the mileage to support this alliance. With Taliban controlling the borders, mobilizing this fighting force will be a tall order. 
but desperate times call for desperate measures. Local militias and their shifting loyalties have always charted Afghanistan's destiny. And in war, no plan is too extravagant. You need a general willing to put his neck out. Bureau Report, We On, World is One. We On is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.